You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. Good afternoon, it's The Bigger Picture and I'm Mira Sivasodhi. She has, to her credit, more than 30 albums and singles altogether, 20 number one hit songs in the local charts, received the award for best female vocals no less than five times, performed extensively both here in Malaysia and across the world, and permeated our homes with her sweet as honey voice through numerous jingles, not to mention the iconic 1989 rooftop of Diabumi building video of the patriotic song Satya. 33 years into this business, artist, singer, actor, composer and lyricist Francesca Peter is as vivacious as ever, showing no signs of slowing and indeed marking this anniversary with a huge concert and album launch as well. This busy lady joins me today to tell us much more. Welcome to the show, Fran. Thank you for having me. Now, Fran, was music one of your first loves? Yes, it was. Yes. It always was. I think that kind of bothered my mom when, when I was uh, <laughs> younger, little. Mm-hmm. But um, I think they also had quite a bit of pleasure out of it, seeing me being quite silly, you know. <laughs> How <laughs> old were you? Um, I was quite little. I used to love to listen to like the Jacksons and uh, the Osmonds and uh, even Streisand, funnily enough, mm-hmm. because uh, for a young girl, one would have thought that you'd be listening to more of the other stuff yes. rather than Streisand. But for some reason, I was very drawn to her. Okay. And um, how has Barbara Streisand made an impact on you? I suppose it's because of her funny... Uh, she's she's a character, I think. Um, she's very witty. She's funny. At a young age, I mean, for me, witty was something that was not quite there yet then. I don't know about today. But her tone, her voice... I think basically it's because the effortless way of singing when she she reaches her higher notes and it's not screeching, it's comforting. That's what I've always liked about her. Um, there's a sense of elegance and yet powerful. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, was your family always supportive of your ambitions? I think not really. No? I think not. Um, my mom, I think my mom, my grand, my late grandmother, um, I think they were more afraid than anything else. In those days when you're talking about getting into music, I was, it was in the late 70s when I was just fresh out of school. And um, it also just happened at that time that, you know, although I love both my parents, my father and my mother um, very much, um, um, my parents have been separated for very many years. And so, you know, my dad sort of, kind of um, left home at, during that time. And so it was kind of hard on the family financially. So I saw it as a way at the age of uh, 17. I, I kind of told my mom that I saw it as a way of earning a decent living. And I was telling her that, you know, with all the the experience I had, well, so-called experience, school talent times and things like that, I said, you know, my teachers would say that I sing well, I, I sing very well. So I told my mom, why don't I just make a living out of it? But the fear that they had was probably because, um, it, you know, usually people involved with drugs, um, alcohol, sex, whatever, you know. The stigma uh, yeah, that came so, along with it. And then also some women, if you're not lucky, when you get involved with drugs, then you end up doing prostitution. So I think that was their biggest fear. And my dad, I think, he kind of came into picture for a short while. And he was always uh, worried that people were going to take advantage of me as well. But he kind of like just came, but then he just went, you know. And so from then on, it was just, uh, you know, all the way. You <laughs> still pushed ahead. Yeah. yeah and just went <laughs> Somehow, all the way. And yeah. no stopping you after 33 yes. years. Yes, I think if you're in love with something, so in love with that, and especially if it's something out of true passion, I don't think it can ever leave you. Yeah. yeah. How did you stay on track, though? I'm sure there were times when it was difficult. Oh, of course. You know, when you're surrounded by people who are into other things, and uh, even in my travels over the years, you know, when I was in the States, um, and I was moving in the correct circle of people where you know that you can, you're stepping on that, that path, and you're going to probably make it too. It was a choice there are very many things that more likely than not I'd had to use um, a lot of serious thinking whether I want it that badly or I'm comfortable where I am because, you know, at home, I've been there, done that. It's almost like, you know, you're already so f- famous at home and then you've done everything. And then when you go to another level, it became uh, to a state where I felt I just want to enjoy it, you know, because you've been through all that stuff 
that that thing of fame and stardom and you're climbing the ladder. And then when you're going to another country and then you're like, okay, going back through that same motion again. again. But then again, that is slightly different. It can be a little aggressive in certain things. And uh, I kind of thought to myself, no, I want to live and love and just do music and work with some of these wonderful, great musicians. They're very well known there. They would play with some great performers, commercial as well as jazz. And I said that I'm a part of them, you know, so the soul felt good. (laughs) Okay, in 1990, you went to the U.S. And you spent two years performing in and around Los Angeles. Yes. Um, What was that like? That was wonderful. It was terrific experience as well as scary. My manager was pretty good, um, but I think they also saw a kind of softer side to me, obviously because I'm not Mm American-American and not completely and totally used to a culture that's slightly uh, ahead. Obviously now we're kind of like, you know, we like to think that, oh, we don't want to be like this or that country or whatever, but we are no different. We are the same, I think, you know. But having said that, working with uh, some of Jazz being a guest vocals on his album and also working with so many other musicians like the band Himalaya and all this. It was a great experience and my manager was very protective over me and um, if I had stayed longer, I'm sure, you know, I would have done a lot more but I had to make a lot of choices in my life. I have never had any regrets uh, because I've had the joy and the pleasure of working and they're all still my friends still today and I know that if I wanted to just pick up and just continue, I'm sure it'll work again. Right. Yeah. What happened in the US? I mean, when you went there and said, you know, I'm Francesca Peter from Malaysia, <laughs> what was your reaction like? Malaysia? Uh, Malaysia, yes. Most of them don't know where Malaysia is. I mean, even today, you'll still find people who don't know where Malaysia is. They Once, I remember the first time somebody said, where are you from? You know, they were thinking, I said, uh, you know, listening to me, say, you have strong English accent. Where are you from? And then one guy said, are you from Hawaii? <laughs> I said, yeah, right. Yeah, Malaysia is in Hawaii, you know. I said, hello. And I would have to explain to them. I say, do you know where Singapore is? <laughs> you know. And I say, yeah, I know where Singapore is. Um, we're just next door. <laughs> Malaysia is next door. And you know what? If you look at a map, Malaysia is a little bit bigger than Singapore. It's like a dot, you know, there. But, of course, Singapore has... A very, uh, you know, has made, uh, its, made name. its name, you know. Yeah. Okay. But they didn't treat you any differently. No, they didn't. Some people spoke to me in Spanish. They thought I was, you know, Hispanic or something. So I say, oh, no, 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 speak uh, Spanish, uh, English, English. But uh, it's okay. It, I've had a lovely, lovely time. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Okay. You are a homegrown product, I would say, <laughs> yes. um, for many, many years. <laughs> yes. Until you ventured out to the U.S., you went on to China, Hong yes, Kong, all yes. sorts of places. Yes. What would you say are some of the main differences of performing in Malaysia and abroad? It's. I think it's the audience. If one claps, then everyone claps. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the only way to describe it, you know. She's hinting about her upcoming concert. <laughs> you know, <laughs> clap one clap, people. then everybody claps. They're you not know, the sure. Kind of thing. They're yeah, not they're sure. not sure. And I think that I don't know whether that is because it's because of our education system. I've always felt that we need a little bit more freedom in schools. I'm not saying freedom in certain things. That's another topic altogether. But freedom, freedom to for speak. children. Children be able to ask questions because, let's face it, I don't want to be unkind. Either. They are good teachers and they are good teachers. And there are some that are really, really not fit to be there. I don't want to be unkind. I have friends who are teachers and they are absolutely fantastic. Their students love them to bits, whether they're Malay, Chinese or Indian teachers, you know. But there are some that really leaves me to despair. You know, sometimes when I just, you know, I've been to a couple of places, a couple of schools, and I've sort of looked in and, you know, just look at how they are conducting the class, you know, and you see uh, things, you know, just by and by, you know. You just wonder what are they teaching the kids, you know. That really worries me. And when fear is instilled in them, I mean, I know that these days people say that even teachers get beaten up by students. Yes, that happens. But then if you look at it, the bigger picture, something must be wrong somewhere. Something isn't quite right. How is it that we are that way? Teaching is important. When you teach well, the disciplines do come in. Of you course. Know? It does. We are speaking to Francisca Peter, the artist, singer, composer and lyricist on her upcoming concert called Concert Keunggulan 33 Tahun Francesca Peter. And um, when we come back, we'll find out more about um, what was it like 
um, you know, when Francesca returned to Malaysia after her trips abroad on The Bigger Picture, BFM 89.9. You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. Good afternoon. It's The Bigger Picture and I'm Mira Sivasovi. We are talking to Francesca Peter, an artist, singer, composer and lyricist on her concert that's actually coming up. Now, Francesca, you were famous for the patriotic song, Setia. You were famous. You were famous. probably a baby then. Uh, no, I wasn't. I was uh-huh. a big fan. I was a big fan of baby. yours. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Still a baby. <laughs> okay, at the Juara Lagu, I love Sakada di Pingiran and you. Aku Kahilanganmo. Those Thank are you. fantastic songs. Still playing on the radio today. Now, when you came back to Malaysia after going all over, um, what prompted your return? Um, actually, my better half. Um, we we travelled quite a lot, of course, and uh, when I moved back, we moved back from Hong Kong um, after many years. Um, not that many years, actually, but people, of course, when you've gone that long, like almost 10 years, they think that, oh my God, you know, she's not ever or around here at all you know she's no longer here uh but i did come back off and on you know did another album in 96 and then i went back again and then you know a couple of i came i came back and i did some shows and things like that um but um because of uh the fact that his contract had ended in hong kong we moved back here and then um i just decided that you know I just go back into the swing of things again. And then I got hold of my sister. And she wasn't doing anything at that time. She just wrapped up some work she had, you know, finished her contract. And then I just, my mom was suggesting, mothers, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Why don't you ask your sister to manage you? And then I... Keep it like, within the family. Well, it works for some, but not for all, okay. you know. And she's young, my younger sister, the baby in the family. And it's hard when you're older and you're kind of set in your ways a little. And so she had to learn. The first year was hard. We fought like hell. <laughs> oh, we fought. <laughs> we fought. Like you did when you were growing up as yeah. well, I'm sure. But actually, not really. When I was growing up, I was the oldest. We are like seven years apart. I'm older okay. than her. And I used to love her, baby her, cuddle her. She's no longer so that baby. No, unfortunately, can't do all that. But we are still very affectionate family. And so she learned. And now she's probably, I would say... One of the top ones at the moment, because um, we both did a course as well when we were in London on uh, artist management and things, and we know certain things, although these things, they hardly or even almost apply them here. But when you deal with international artists, they apply it to them. But the local artists, they treat them like coolies, mm-hmm. you know, and that really, really upsets me. Sometimes you can do a show, there's no contract, you know, that's really upsetting and distressing. Mm-hmm. And then they say, oh, everything is by word. And then, you know, there have been artists, so many artists have always had these, you know, front page, you know, being cheated, blah, blah, blah. You know, and you're thinking, oh, my God, you know. Why isn't it regulated? I think this is for the lawyers in this country. It's time some of you got together and started a entertainment law firm. There you go. A niche market. Yes. Entertainment law. <laughs> Correct. Okay. They, this exists in other countries? Oh, yes. In America? Oh, boy, that's no nonsense. Everything, every detail. I've read contracts like I was blue in the face, okay? And it's like you need help. You may think, you know, that one word could mean like 10 million meanings. Mm-hmm. And you could just mess yourself up for nothing. Right. And, and I think that that's the danger. I mean, here, our contracts are quite basic, quite simple when you have, uh, you know, entertainment contracts. But when it's something that's on a big scale, usually I, I think the fine lines, and I'm very much for these sort of things. I've always been that way from day one. And for someone like me who's never finished university, um, you know, I felt that I've always been very strong. My father was a journalist, he's retired. And he, it's always about the the fine lines, you know. He's always said that, you know, you've got to be very clear, read these things carefully. And my sister also has a bit of law background. She says, you know, you've got to be very careful. Sometimes she reads them up and then she says that, look, we're not clear on this, you know, so we've got to see someone who's practicing it in mm-hmm. the legal field. So I've always, for years and years, been very serious about these sort of things, and even till today. What else would you like to see different? I mean, it's been 33 years. We, I'm sure we've done some good things. We have done some good things, I think, whereby there's 
a fair amount of freedom at the moment. I mean, I look at you guys here. Uh, I think freedom of speech is, is kind of improved a fair bit, but we can improve more. And also, I'm more concerned about the children, their future, education, because it's so important. Right now, like, I've had this strong feeling about uh, divisions. When you have uh, different language schools, I feel that that separates us from really being one Malaysia. Okay. What about the music industry? Music industry, I wish that big, rich, wealthy companies, <laughs> please la, you know. I mean, you've got to be more supportive over your locals, you know. Yeah, we have various languages, Chinese, Tamil, you know, Malay. But, you know, in Malaysia, I suppose, and in English, is, you know, always viewed as an international market. But it's not necessarily so. We have a lot of great talents here also recording and doing English stuff, and they're so good. But people need to learn to look back within your own country. If you want to really bring it to the forefront, then you should be more supportive over your local artists, those who are here, basically. Whether they're singing in Malay or English, I think they should learn to acknowledge that and push. It's just like rebranding, you know, when you're focused on it and you spend that time, the few years, you know, and you pump them, pump, they become like a product, mm -hmm. a real product. Right. And I think that's where we are lacking. I mean, we, we do a lot for Indonesian acts and nothing against them. I love them to bits. They're great performers, great artists, great music. I love them to bits. I consider them all international artists as in because they're not Malaysians. But I would love to see here our own home people try to uh, be more supportive over our locals, yeah. Okay, you have a concert coming up yes. called Concert Keunggulan 33 Tahun Francesca yes. Peter. What can we look forward to? Well, there'll be lots of surprises. Um, I think I kind of like made a boo-boo one day and I just sort of dropped one little <laughs> secret. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could see them looking at me and say, why did you say that? <laughs> it's a surprise. And I said, okay la, okay, mistake. Okay, let's step up the momentum and then she might let it out. <laughs> Something else no. out. <laughs> um, the invitation, I mean, the organizers I designed, uh, uh, Mr. Shega and his team, uh, they have managed to get uh, Roy to come down sponsored by Air Asia. Wow. Fly, flying Roy. him down from where Perth, Australia. Is he? Whoa, he lives right. there. So that's where he is yes, now. Yes. He's oh, still I love single that song too. That both of you sang. What? Siapa dia sebelum daku? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, that so was a lovely song. The concert has five different segments. And we have another invited guest as well from Singapore. And the concert and one other, two other, maybe one more. That's it. And um, the concert has like five different segments and it's kinda like my journey. And of course the songs that people like, a lot of them are in there. Mm -hmm. And it's always the case, you see, you can't please everyone. But we've tried to put in as much as we can because so many people have been writing and they say, you must sing this, you must do that, but we can't do everything. So we've got like maybe a couple, two or three, three, maybe four kind of medleys. And then the rest we will do like the, the main hit songs, the big ones. We will do them on the full scale. Okay. You are also releasing a new album called Kaungulan Francesca Peter. Is this a comp compilation of I, old and new works? Actually, or it was released. Um, the album Kaungulan, okay, why this name came in Kaungulan is because Warner Music released an album called Kaungulan last year. And when I designed, got hold of that album, and they were also like in the last year talking to my manager, my sister Bibiana, and telling her that, uh, look, why don't we do something, you know, let's, she's got to do a concert, she's got to, she's got a lot of fans, so we're going to try and push to see whether we can do one for her and get her out there to sing all the songs that you know, people miss her for. So this album, Kaungulan, actually has quite a lot of hits on it. It's like, I think about was it like almost 40 songs or something. They are old songs? Yes. And one song which is not that old, but it was released in uh, 2009. It was a single, Begitulah Aku. It was Manan's newest song with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they decided that if we drive the concert, then we will say, we will call it Concert Kaungulan, Tiga Puluh Tiga Tahun Friend. So that's why right. they've taken the name from that album. album. But having said that, they will also be selling this, at least they will, at the Warner Music will be selling my box set. So people will get to do it. Plus, later on, maybe I will be doing a single following up an album. Okay. Hopefully. So we'll get to see Roy there? Oh, yes, of course. And you will be singing uh, Aku Kehilangan Mu and Skada Di Oh, yes, of course. Those are like those big hits. You the know, must. Those are like, yeah, those are must. What about Setia? Should I be telling everything? <laughs> I've tried my level best. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? Since you also like that song, you grew up with it, yes, yeah. we will be. Great. Wonderful. There'll be a lot of new arrangements, but I can 
I can tell you it's going to be good. It's going to take us back in time. That's, yes. that's for sure. Yes. Okay, presented by iDesign, Concert Kaungulan, Tiga Pratiga Tahun Francesca Peter, happens on the 5th and 6th of February at 8.30 p.m. Istana Budaya, Jalan Tun Razak. Tickets are priced at 99 ringgit to 299 ringgit. For um, details, you can actually log on to ticket to youbiz or arasiaredtix.com. If you'd like to pick up a box set of um, all of Francesca's albums, it will be available at Istana Budaya only on the 5th and 6th of February, which is also the venue of the concert. That's right. Why should we come, Fran? Come on. Me! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. Because it's me. You know, no. Because so many of them have been writing to my website and Facebooking me and Twittering me and they're like, Oh please you have to do this you got to <laughs> sing that you know we you know we we got to do a concert and say so fine now it's here i just want i want to pray that everything runs smoothly there won't be any hiccups that you know suddenly something happens and goes wrong because you know everything has its process and with everything sort of like being pushed 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 so hard this far you know i just pray that my fans will pray hard for me to that it'll go smoothly but it is for the fans i mean there are so many people out there they've been so sweet so it is for for them all this happening on the 5th and 6th of february catch francisca peter this has been the bigger picture bfm 89.9 bfm 89.9 the business station